Hey, I'm Charlie. I'm the design engineer for Janus Motorcycles. And uh, today we're gonna be prototyping the first 450 pillion seat. Uh, the pillion seat, 450 pillion seat is the most requested option we've had for the 450. Um, initially, we intended to have it out a little sooner than we have, but the getting the 450 fully into production with all the chassis components has been a big project. So these things are kind of just trickling through now. This video is really showcasing the prototyping process and kind of the, the end of the design into uh, getting the first piece that we can test on a bike. Here at Janus, we do a lot of sheet metal parts because they're easy to produce and they're fast to produce. Um, and this lends itself pretty well to our, our prototyping process. So with a fairly simple set of tools, a bandsaw, a welder, a grinder, um, we can make just about any of the parts on the bike in a very small amount of time. So start to finish this whole process of making the pillion seat took place in an entire week and I really only spent half of my time on it. So we can turn that stuff out pretty quickly, especially for how complicated this this assembly is. The 450 pillion seat will also be the 450 cargo rack. So this whole assembly is really the cargo rack. And if you bolt a seat pad to the top of it, it's a pillion seat. As a customer, when you're buying this, you'll be able to use this as your cargo rack and then throw a pad on it if you wanna take somebody for a ride. We're kind of starting off here at the end of the design process. You see me going back and forth to my computer a lot. I, I go between working off of prints and working off of uh, cut out templates and jumping over and checking measurements on the computer just to make sure that I've, I've got everything squared away. Usually in production, all of our sheet metal and our tubing is laser cut out, but there's a pretty long lead time for that. And for the production or for prototyping process, reducing those lead times is how you get things done quickly. So instead of having all these sheet metal parts laser cut, I print it out on printer paper and tape together and cut out uh, the shapes of the metal on paper and then used spray adhesive to glue it onto the different sizes of sheet metal that we use. And then everything gets cut out with a bandsaw and an angle grinder, which is a fair amount of work, but compared to waiting four weeks for the parts to come in from laser, it's not too bad. One of the things that I'm kind of looking forward to or looking, looking into the future when I'm thinking about the design for this, uh, I really wanted to add a lot of spots for things to be attached things to bolt on. And so one of the disadvantages of not having things laser cut and instead of having to do it by hand is that doing internal features, so like holes or cutouts or, um, you know, lightning holes uh, is really hard to do. So I left most of that out. You can see I, I added a lot of M8 weld nuts all over the place. And that, that serves a couple features. We'll be able to bolt a seat onto it, or maybe we want to bolt a, uh, a fuel bottle or a fuel auxiliary fuel tank on the side or a uh, tool roll or whatever. It leaves us a lot of options to have those, um, those threaded holes all over the outside of this thing. And in the final design, we'll have, um, you know, plenty of spots where you can get a bungee cord in or tie a piece of rope uh, and things like that, just to, just to kind of make it practical. The next step to getting this all put together is getting the bends exactly where they should be. So what I do before I peel the paper templates off is I take a little center punch and put a couple of pricks right where the uh, the bends go on those parts. So there's a line on the print, on the piece of paper, where a bend needs to go. So I'll punch through the paper into the metal, and then when the paper comes off, I can connect those punch marks with a Sharpie, and that lets me know where to bend. So most of the, uh, or some of the parts that I'm working on in this assembly uh, are eighth inch sheet. The rest is 16 gauge, but that eighth inch sheet is a little bit uh, thicker than our bender can bend, that little uh, finger break we have. So I just give it a little helping hand by grooming it with the angle grinder on one side. And that also helps get the bend in, in exactly the right spot. Takes a little bit of a careful touch, but really makes the bending go a lot easier. And then when we're done with that, we'll put a weld over the groove and grind it down flush so you'll you know, you'll never know that it was, it was grooved out like that to get bent. Once we've got all our parts cut out and most of the bends done on them. That's kind of where jumping back and forth between the computer matters a lot because at this point we're checking, okay, what, how are these parts compare to the design? So I'm, I'm taking measurements off of the parts in my hands and I'm checking it against the computer. So I know it needs to be adjusted 
uh, so that everything goes together <laughs> smoothly. The first part that we start with the assembly on is the, uh, the center bracket for the pillion seat. So this is a two-part assembly. The first part is the actual seat part itself, and then we have a bracket that mounts to the top part of the frame that bolts everything together. So the, uh, the bracket has a couple of bent parts, a couple of quarter inch thick parts and an eighth inch thick part. And I grabbed a production frame to set everything up on, fixture it, bolt it up like it was going to be assembled on a bike, but it's just a frame that I pulled off the shelf. Um, and that way, when we're finally done and ready to assemble everything, I know that it already goes on a bike because it got stuck together while it was on a bike. Um, you see too, a, a couple we jumped over to my shop pretty quick for an afternoon and machined a couple little pieces to fit inside the uh, the frame bungs. Um, those just transmit the torque of that bolt really nicely into a solid piece of metal instead of kind of on the edge of that part. And you see me while we're machining that, you see me test fitting with one of the frame bungs, um, slipping that machined piece into there so that we make sure we get it just exactly the right size. We're moving on to the second part. And this one was quite a bit trickier to fixture with those two pieces of round tubing. Um, they really need to be the correct distance apart and parallel. And uh, until we have tooling set up for that, uh, kind of the best way to do it one off is to just use your eye. So um, you see me a lot. Uh, I'll be looking down the edges of parts or taking a couple step back, steps back and uh, kneeling and, and getting different angles just so I can make sure everything lines up exactly at the end. And, and in the end, you, you see the photos, we, it really came out nice and straight and exactly where it needed to be. So it worked out well. But once I've got those tubes in place, so I tack the, uh, the ends on them so they'll bolt onto the frame. And then you can see I tacked just a little piece of rod between them to hold them the correct distance apart. So I just took a piece of, I did that off camera, took a piece of quarter inch rod and cut it to the exact correct length and tacked those two together. And there was just enough play for me to be able to bend that stuff around just a little bit and get it to the right spot. And then that rod's enough out of the way that I can take the sheet metal, 16 gauge sheet metal assembly and lay it on top of there. So I tacked that together very lightly on the bench and then fitted it on to check how well it lined up with the tubes. And I was very happy with the fit on that. It, it really nestled in there exactly like it should have. And that's a <laughs> satisfying thing to start with paper templates and have it all perfectly line up. Got everything tacked together. And that was pretty much the end of the hard work. At that point, just needed to unbolt it off the bike, put it on the bench, get all the final welds done, and then everything cleaned up. So I really, um, with all the grooving and everything, it can have a tendency to, to round corners over instead of being um, nice and sharp like you would expect from a sheet metal assembly. Um, but a little bit of extra time getting that weld built up on the corner and grinding everything flat and smooth can can help with that. And in the end, I'm, I'm very happy with how it came out. I think it looks great. And um, once we had everything welded and cleaned up on the bench, uh, then comes the fun part of this process, which is testing and tweaking and figuring out the things that we like about the design and that we don't like on the design. So um, I installed the whole seat assemblies uh, onto the second prototype bike. I believe it's the second ever prototype 450, just to, to get some miles on it to see how the ride was. Um, one of the design features of this, because underneath the seat area of the 450, the the main seat is the most parts dense part on the entire bike, pretty much as far as Janus components go. So it was very tricky to get a design that would work in there uh, and avoid the range of the suspension travel and the rear fender and the seat travel with the spring. So this design actually does away with uh, the seat springs. And um, we, don't, we don't lose a whole lot there. They're nice, but um, we still have a, a, a rear sprung suspension on this bike. So, so it, it still rides quite nicely. Um, at this point, I've got about maybe 100 miles on that, that bike with the, the seat. And um, I found some things already that I'd like to tweak a little bit. I think we need to adjust the seat height just a hair. Um, but overall, uh, I, I really like how it came together. I like how it looks. It's very functional. And so that, that also is where this testing comes in is, is I'm kind of just playing around and getting familiar with what are the needs going to be, what is useful, what isn't useful. 
Getting the first prototype is definitely a big step, but uh, there's a fair amount of work still ahead. Getting it into production is definitely at least half the work. I'd say we're probably about a third of the way there now. So, well, I've been Charlie. Thanks for hanging out in the fab shop with me and peeking over my shoulder as we do the first prototype for the uh, 450 pillion seat. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel for more content and we'll see you next time.